I got the South Sudanese flag above my bed. Every morning when I wake up, you know, so I remember where I'm from. And, you know, remember people back at home, my country is struggling. Winyan Gabriel has never been home. He was born in the midst of the Second Sudanese Civil War, almost 1,500 miles from the village his parents were forced to leave when fighting broke out in 1983. Winyan born in Khartoum, Sudan in 1997. I was sad all nine month pregnancy because I was sad for my daughter, which has passed away when she was five months. So when I gave birth, his dad asked me to name him Wenyin. My name means wipe your tears. So it's basically, you know, wipe your tears about, you know, the last child that you lost, you know, wipe the tears for the past and the family. Living in Khartoum, there was no opportunity for our children to go to school. We don't have a great job over there. We've been trading like refugee for them because we're coming from the state which is fight with them. So we were looking for better opportunity, better life for our children. Khartoum wasn't very safe, so we were we were in the northern part of Sudan. We were in enemy territory, I would say, segregated from the rest of the community. We're, we're a Christian uh, family in a Muslim-run country, so it was very difficult, and we just knew it. The war that was happening in the South was getting closer and closer to us. Fearing for their safety, the family sold all of their belongings and fled the country in 1997. They were eventually granted asylum in Manchester, New Hampshire, a town with a tightly knit Sudanese community. And no one was closer than Winyan and his cousin Bol. Winyan and Bol, they just like a twins. They really love each other. Bol came in America here after we've been here for like a couple of years, and then he's teaching women how to speak our language. They were like two peas in a pod, couldn't separate them. They were best friends. Um, they did everything together. They like to talk about it when they see the basketball player, who down a lot and who shoot three. They always just want to be with the basketball player all the time, and they try their best. Basketball became one more shared passion that brought the cousins even closer. But in August of 2007, when they were both 10, Winyan lost his best friend. I got a call and I heard he was in the hospital. He had drowned in the Merrimack River. And uh, that was, you know, that was real devastating for me. You know, him passing away was a real pivotal moment in my life. It's the first time I really ever lost anybody. I took on his number for basketball. And uh, we won a CYO championship that year that we dedicated to his name. When we lost ball, it was a huge thing for all of us. So everybody was down. But when you pick it up and bring it high for us. Bol is not dead now, he's alive. Because of Winyan, his name being remembered all the time. Winyan still thinks of his cousin every time he puts on the number 32 for the Kentucky Wildcats. But these days, he's also playing for something bigger. It is a real big impact on everybody in the city. If he knows it or not, like everybody here knows his name. Everybody in the basketball community knows who he is. All the South Sydney kids around here, they all want to be like that too. Yes, take it in. Why you doing It's pretty inspiring to see. It's pretty inspiring to see uh, when you're on TV. I see it kind of, you know, shows to the younger or the youth that um, you know, anything is possible. The community is like it used to be bad, but knowing that when you like made it out. That's actually pretty amazing. We're just over here supporting him every day, making sure that we got somebody behind his back like, cheering for him. Going through this process, it's like, it's hard to really just do it for yourself. When you have a greater purpose, I feel like it gives you that extra energy that you need to succeed. One day I'm thinking about Bull, one day I'm thinking about my mom, you know, thinking about my sister that passed away. You know, I think about my family, how they're dependent on me, you know, and it just, it helps to keep me pushing, helps me stay positive even when things are down. There's other South Sudanese kids out there that look up to me. They see, you know, we have one of our own out there. It's a new country. We need all of us here that are in America to give back. And it just, it means a lot to me just to be part of that. I think it went well. I mean, we got to compete a lot. I got up a lot of shots. And, uh, you know, I think it was really well organized. How's this process been for you so far? Is, is this your first stop? How many stops have you made? Um, this is my fifth stop, actually, and the process has been, it's been pretty good. I mean, I, I stopped at OKC. I had a stop in Utah, Milwaukee, 
in, in Brooklyn. You know, this is my fifth stop. But, uh, you know, it's just been great. You get to compete against a bunch of different talent. You get to evaluate, see where you're at, and uh, you know, see the things you need to work on. You just get a lot of feedback. I mean, the workouts is great too, but then you get to go and talk to the coaches and the interviews, and I uh, just get to get one-on-one -on -one conversations. You know, get to know more about the program, get to know more about you, and you just more informed on your decision. Did you know anything about the Kings or what Dave Yeager is doing here before you came in? Uh, I mean, I knew a little bit. I mean, I know there's a lot of Kentucky players that already played for the program. Uh, one of my former teammates, De'Aaron Fox, is already here. And uh, he said he loved it here. You know, I asked him about the city. He said, great weather. Uh, you know, the fans are great over here. And, uh, you know, obviously the facilities are nice. And uh, they have a nice development program here. So, uh, I mean, it's just a great place. And uh, I think that I love the energy around here. Uh, no, no, no new advice. You know, he just told me, go, just go do your thing. You'll be all right, man. Coaches are cool. All right. Are you still having fun out there? I know you're auditioning stuff, but can you still have fun working out? Like oh, that? You can always have fun every day. I mean, it's all it's all in the how you think about it. You know, you go in here with a positive ment mentality, just have your fun, play your heart out, and you know, everything else comes with it.